to begin with, let's have your introduction and introduction of the organization that you represent. Hi, uh, I'm Mishu. Uh, I'm the founder of GoHive. We are a co-working space provider. Uh, currently have a few centers in Delhi and NCR and we're just entering into Bangalore as well. Right. Uh, since you'll be speaking about PropTech, I would like to understand uh, about the needs that we have in PropTech. I mean, of course, we know about technology, we know about PropTech, we know how is it doing. But how can technology transform PropTech now? So I think when we talk about uh, the Indian scenario currently, uh, you know, what has been missing so far when we talk about PropTech has only been about discovery. So PropTech has been used only as a discovery platform, mostly. However, when we talk about global scenarios today, uh, there are companies like SMS Assist, which takes care of facility management. Uh, there are companies like uh, uh, Open Door, which kind of helps in finding the, you know, the, the right price as, as, a, as a starting point itself. So that's where uh, you know the, the technology can play a big, big part in, in the in, with reference to the Indian scenario as well. And those are the kind of gaps and the vacuum where, where it is, which should be addressed very soon. Uh, another area wherein probably technology can play a fantastic role is again contracts. Uh, you know, ensuring that the money is safe when I am transacting with you as a buyer or a seller, as a broker or a developer, uh, how do I ensure my interest and the financials which are included? So that's where if a platform comes in which kind of secures that, that's where the opportunity currently lies in the Indian ecosystem. How is technology helping in the business of real estate? Uh, easing out processes, I think that's the most important thing. Uh, when we talk, see again, when we talk about real estate, it's of course brick and mortar. So of course, it's a physical thing that needs to be sold or bought or experienced. Uh, technology has to be more used more as an enabler, more as a, 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 a as a tool to actually simplify the processes. And I think that's where it is coming. And whether it's a discovery or a uh, transaction, you know, that's where things need to be addressed. Right. Uh I would like to touch upon a different, a little uh, different aspect of uh, co-working spaces since you represent this sector. Uh, talking about millennials, which are actually uh, the major takers of co-working spaces, uh, what kind of value do they see in co-working spaces now that the trend is shifting from traditional workspaces to co-working spaces? What kind of value do you do they see in it? Okay. Now, one thing I would clarify that it's no longer the co-working is no no longer specific just to the millennials. So when we started about a year and a half ago, yes, uh, most of the queries used to come through startups or early stage startups. Today, co-working has become kind of a solution for workspace, whether it's an enterprise client or a uh, you know or a large SME. Uh, all those enterprises today look at co-working as a solution. S coming to the fact that what do actually people see, whether it's an enterprise client or a millennial, more so millennials per se is how well is the community built together. Uh, a lot of these people actually also look at personal growth, professional growth while they're working out of a co-working space. So they don't, whether they're working for a company or they're an entrepreneur themselves or a the freelancer, uh, they want to see that how can that actually, the space that they're working out of, how can it actually help them to grow phenomenally, uh, whether it's through the use of, let's say, events, uh, which can be, let's say, educational events, maybe adding to their skill sets. Uh, it can be softer issues and also figuring out uh, whether the space can actually provide them opportunities to seek more business or more opportunities professionally as well. Right. Uh, touching a different aspect of it now, uh, how, is, how is fundraising for prop tech sector? Is it easier or more difficult considering the debacles of a couple of enterprises earlier? So I think there was a time when PropTech did phenomenally well in terms of, uh, let's say, fundraising in, in India as well, I think between 2014 till about 16. Uh, then there was definitely a dry phase till about start 17 and 18 were kind of difficult. But I think there's a interest back into the market. Uh, unfortunately, co-working has not seen a lot of venture funding yet. Uh, co-living is doing phenomenally well. Uh, a lot of co-living co companies have already raised funds through a lot of venture capitalist funds. Uh, there are certain areas, again, as I said, most of the uh, prop tech companies so far have been trying to do what ha already has been done in India. Uh, and they're just trying to do that differently. I think there are still quite a few areas that we talked about earlier which can be addressed and I think that should, uh, you, know, I, you know, whatever VCs that I have spoken to in about, let's say last six months or so, there is definitely a new interest back into the prop tech as a, as a market. Right. Thank you for your time and thank you for the insights.